Now, from Nebraska's trusted news source, this is Channel 8 News at 5. Yeah, did you feel that this afternoon? Hurricane force winds hitting Lincoln today. Good evening, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us. Get this 93 mile an hour winds recorded at the Lincoln Airport today, but we were not alone. Severe weather and tornado warnings were issued in several parts of our viewing area, and it tore through quickly. We have team coverage of what happened this afternoon coming up in a little bit. But first, of course, we want to start with the man of the hour, Chief Meteorologist John Dishour. John? You know, we were three mile per hour short of having category two hurricane strength uh, force winds around Lincoln with that 93 mile per hour wind gust. You can see right now on the radar, things are dramatically better than what they were just about an hour to hour and a half ago uh, around the region. Right now, the storms that we had have now moved off to the east into western Iowa, where they still have confirmed reports of tornadoes in that area. Tornado warnings continue from uh, northern Iowa all the way down into northwestern Missouri. Around here, nothing to worry about with that at this point, but you can see how these are all still moving off to the east and northeast. However, we're still watching for a little rain still on the back side of the system and even a little snow mixing in. So not out of the question, we could see some snow showers out towards Kearney, for instance. Grand Island may see a few snow showers as we head towards the next hour to hour and a half, and we may see a few light rain showers passing off to the east, southeast, or northeast, I should say, over the next several hours. Take a look at all the reports of wind and tornadoes. We've had three reports of tornadoes in the Channel 8 viewing area, and then five total across the state. Uh, we've had 57 reports of wind uh, gust as well as wind damage as well. See winds right now. Well, we've got gusts to 35 miles per hour out towards Grand Island, 30 in Hastings, 40 miles per hour in Beatrice. By the way, if you do see some snow showers out to the west, the winds will still be gusting. Visibilities will likely drop for a short period of time in a short distance. So be careful if you're out driving this evening. High wind warning is in effect and continues through this evening at 9 o'clock to be specific in southeast Nebraska. Temperature wise, we were in the low 70s this afternoon. We've dropped significantly. We're down to 58 degrees in Lincoln. It's 60 in Beatrice, and you can see even cooler temperatures farther out to the west. For the rest of this evening, we'll see the winds continuing 54 degrees at 6, 44 degrees by 8 o'clock, and 38 degrees by 10 o'clock. We've got some cold temperatures coming tomorrow morning. We're talking a drop of 50 to 60 degrees co feeling cooler tomorrow morning. We'll talk about how cold it will get as well as what you can expect for the rest of the week in my Storm Alert Team forecast. All right, John, thank you very much. And as we mentioned, we have team coverage of today's storms. Macy Meyer has been collecting pictures and videos from you, our viewers. Earlier today, we asked you for them, and boy, did you deliver. Macy joins us live now with more. Macy. Well, you guys, you can tell right now that things have certainly calmed down, but the chaos of this quick storm has left a lot of damage around the community and still very evident. Fierce wind and rain ripping for Lincoln right around 3.30 Wednesday afternoon. This video taken from the Channel 8 parking lot near Van Dorn and Highway 2 showing the hurricane force winds. Channel 8 viewer Eric sent us this picture. The scooter sign near 14th and Old Cheney shows the damage the wind left behind. Their drive through sign blown over. The Terry family's playground set completely destroyed in the area of Blue Stem Lake just southwest of Lincoln. And though wind showing no mercy through the quick storm, David Lee, who lives just southwest of Lincoln as well, sent us this picture showing a tree that snapped in half and collapsed into their backyard. Over in Hastings, Brian sending us this picture of hail varying in size. Sure did. In video from Brian Douglas and Hastings as well, showing the strong winds that flew through the area mixed in with some rain. This basketball goal in Jody Easter's driveway completely snapped in half out in Beatrice. And also in the area, Brandon sending us this picture, the roof ripped off of Jim's carpet store. And you saw there a lot of damage left to clean up tonight and most likely into tomorrow. Now coming up tonight in our 10 o'clock newscast, I'll have more of your pictures and videos. All right, Macy Meyer reporting live for us. Thank you very much, Macy. Uh, we should probably say if you find your uh, neighbor's uh, garbage can, please return it to them, right? Mm -hmm. And if you have any pictures of the storm or damage from the severe weather, make sure to share it with us. Just head over to our website and click the Submit News tab to upload your photo. 
Over 31,000 people across the state are still without power. So let's take a look at the entire state map here. Now for the colors, if your county is highlighted in blue, that means everyone has power. You're good to go. But the shades of red, that means at least 60% of people in the county don't have power. And I know it's kind of hard to tell, but the darker the red, the higher the percentage of people who are affected. So if it's a lighter orange, that means less people. And here closer to home, let's take a look at uh, Lincoln using the LES outage map. Six and a half. Uh, let's see here. We're down to three and a half. Just a little while ago, it was six and a half. So good news. Three and a half thousand people right now are without power. Uh, the people affected, as you can see, stretch across the city, but a majority are in the south and southeastern parts of Lincoln. LES crews, of course, are out there many as possible, making repairs as quickly as possible. And the Nebraska State Patrol has had a heavy presence of troopers on the road today as that severe weather blew through. Channel 8's Ariana Martinez took a ride with the trooper to give you a look at what they do to keep the roads safe. Ariana. Yes, just within an hour of being with Nebraska State Patrol Trooper White, we pulled over one vehicle for speeding and witnessed another vehicle going well over 100 miles an hour in a 65 mile an hour zone. Now, Trooper White did explain when you mix high winds like we saw today with speed, cars and pickup trucks can actually be lifted up off the pavement. And when we're talking about high profile vehicles like semi trucks or trailers, those can easily be toppled over. Now, so there have been multiple reports of semis rolling over during the storm today. Trooper White explained earlier when that does happen, troopers are sent to the area to help slow down traffic. So vehicles are not passing a crash at 75 miles an hour. So be aware of law enforcement weaving through traffic with their lights on as they are trying to avoid more crashes. One, um, a gray Chevrolet pickup, I clocked him about the 403 just after I got into the uh, crossover or got into the uh, divided median and everything I can't get turned around so if you want to watch for it Even after the thick of the storm passes, the wind will be sticking around a little longer. So watch your speed, maintain your lane and be cautious of your surroundings. And if it does not have to be and if you do not have to be driving, don't and tonight on Channel 8 News at 6, join us and take a seat in the passenger seat as we take a drive with Nebraska State Trooper White through I-80. Reporting live in Lincoln, Ariana Martinez, Channel 8 News. All right, Ariana, thank you so much for that uh, live report. As many of you know, uh, today several schools were closed because mm -hmm. of the predicted nasty weather. Dr. Steve Joel at LPS said it was the first time in his 37 years in Lincoln he canceled classes for a wind day. The two biggest reasons, the winds causing issues for bus drivers, of course, very high profile vehicle there, and kids who would be walking home from school possibly right in the thick of this storm. As always, you can get the latest school delays and cancellations on our website, klknTV.com. And since schools were canceled, many parents were left scrambling last night after the closures. And because of that, some daycare centers here in the capital city were full today. Channel 8's Alexis Kaneski joins us live with the details. Alexa. Yeah, with no school because of weather like we saw earlier, it really puts a strain on daycare centers. But they say they've been preparing for a day like today. Bubbles and Plucks, this is Nicole. Um, we had about 15 families call this morning, so the phones were going off the hook, um, just wondering if we were even open. Bubbles and Blocks Child Development Center near 84th and Old Cheney has been busy after many schools closed their doors Wednesday due to severe weather. Although business was ramped up, the center says it was able to handle everyone, even with staffing shortages. While Bubbles and Blocks had some new faces in their building Wednesday, some of their regular students were not around. Yeah, we've had multiple families that decided to keep them home, um, whether that's due to them working from home and being able to have that accessibility. It is kind of a freak thing that's going on and people are kind of scrambling, not knowing what to do. The main concern is pickup time. Bubbles and Blocks says most families decided to get their children earlier than normal on a day like today, but staff walking kids outside in these winds, it will be a challenge. Um, even just taking one child out to a car. So imagine having three of them and trying to go out to the vehicle. It's probably going to be a little bit crazy this afternoon. 
some other local daycare centers were busy as well. Some making sure parents knew if there was severe weather, like a tornado warning at any given time, for safety, they would not be letting anyone in or out of the buildings. Now, Bubbles and Blocks and many other centers across the capital city have a plan and procedure in place for severe weather like we saw today. Of course, their main goal is to keep your child safe. Reporting in Lincoln, Alexis Skineski, Channel 8 News. All right. Thank you very much, Alexa, for that live report as we continue our team coverage. You know, we heard a little bit about uh, the Nebraska State Patrol and Ariana's mm -hmm. piece. Can you imagine driving a semi on a day like today with winds that high? I know, no doubt. It would be uh, very challenging, dangerous, pretty scary. Yeah. Channel 8's Yosef Nasser joins us live with more on that. Yosef? Rod and Megan, today's storms impacting people who live in the state and also those who are just passing through. I stopped at Shoemaker's Truck Stop to learn from truckers how serious today's winds are. With the wind the way it is, the wind could literally pick up my truck and just slam it to the ground. It would blow me over with an 80 mile an hour wind gust. Truckers, truckers say they've been planning around the wind since early this morning. Once it clears, it's time to hit the road again. I pulled over and I'm going to hang out in the store for a couple hours. I'll grab something to eat. You pull over 30, 45 minutes to an hour and get right back on the road and keep on going. Now, a manager at Shoemakers tells me that truckers stop by regularly to get out of the wind, but that happens more often in the summertime. These kinds of winds are uncommon for December. Now, as you can imagine, for truckers, time is money, and there's a huge sense of urgency to get back on the road even when there's a storm. Coming up at 6, we're going to talk about the financial impact that this has, these types of winds have on truckers. Reporting here in Lincoln, Yosef Nasser, Channel 8 News. Joseph, thank you very much for that live report. And still to come on the news tonight, this weather didn't just... Oh, it's all across the country and still impacting us, I guess, a little here, a little yeah, flicker. Took a little jolt there. We'll mm -hmm. be right back. Discover the unique Daryl's difference.
And nationally, a look at weather here. A massive winter storm hammering the west coast. Several feet of snow in some areas, drenching rains, mudslides, and flooding. ABC's Morgan Norwood has the latest from Los Angeles. After slamming the west coast with everything from heavy rain, wind, and snow, this massive storm system now marching across the country. The system fueled by an atmospheric river breaking several daily records across California. The torrential downpours triggering mudslides in Silverado Canyon, sending dirt and debris racing downhill. Major mud flow. Crews scrambling to restore access to mud blanketed roads, heavy machinery clearing rocks and sludge. The mud and the debris comes down from these burn scar areas very quickly and it's treacherous and Firefighters cannot always get up into those areas, and you may be left on your own. In Orange County, flash flooding threatening homes, firefighters seen pumping out water. And in Monrovia, residents fending off major mud flow with gravel and bags. We've seen some uh, mud flow and debris in our Canyon Park. Um, which we've closed the canyon park indefinitely until rain flow uh, lets up. This same system dumping feet of snow in California's mountains. This tractor trailer immobilized, blocking the road. The Mammoth Mountain ski area barely visible after picking up 27 inches of snowfall. The accumulation, a skier's paradise in Walnut Creek. It's been so long since California's had good snow. So we're just super excited to be able to go to Tahoe and not ski on man-made snow. And that same system is on the move. It's headed right towards the same areas already devastated by that tornado outbreak in the Midwest. Morgan Norwood, ABC News, Los Angeles. No. Your storm alert team forecast with Chief Meteorologist John Dessauer. It's been an active afternoon. Remember the last couple of days of us talking about how we did see some strong winds today? That was definitely the case with winds as high as 93 miles per hour in Lincoln. We had reports of 92 mile per hour winds in Bennett. I want to show you a live look right now from Beatrice looking off to the south and west and notice the sky right now. We've got uh, some lower visibilities, reports of a lot of dust being blown around right now, dropping visibility. So be very careful if you're out driving this evening as we may see uh, visibilities dropping at times. I was hoping my aloe camera is going to pop up here to show you what it looks like outside right now in Lincoln, but it's not doing so. Um, but we are seeing the visibility is reducing in Lincoln. Our photographer uh, outside was mentioning that, uh, that he could feel dust hitting himself or hitting in the face. So just be careful tonight if you're out driving uh, with some of the high winds that are still blowing around outside. We may see those visibilities reducing reduced at times. Radar is quiet around southeast Nebraska, finally. Now, we do see some showers out to the west, and I'll talk about those in a moment because there's also some snow showers mixed in. But I wanted to show you what's going on from the storms that we had earlier today. They have now moved into Iowa as well as Missouri, where you're seeing red and some pinks. Those are tornado warnings, and where you're seeing the pink warnings, that means there's a confirmed tornado, or at least radar uh, confirmed, with these uh, storms and, and tornadoes. And they're moving off to the east, and that's where they will remain. Back to our west, some of this is now starting to change over to a little snow. Also wanted to show you this to show you how the path of this took over the last four hours today. It started in south central portions of the state and just moving off to the east. Uh, this line was moving eastward at 70 miles per hour. We saw individual cells moving northeast at 70 to 75 and at times 85 miles per hour. So some incredible speeds of these storms. Uh, part of that's just because of the wind that's in the upper levels or even the lower levels of the atmosphere. Look at all the storm reports from today. 53 reports of wind in just southeast Nebraska. We've had three reports of tornado as well. Uh, you can see one up in the Columbus area. We also had a report uh, here just to the south and east of Hastings today uh, in Glenville where emergency managers were reporting a tornado. And then further south of that, down towards Edgar, report of a tornado, uh, one mile south of, Ed, Ed, or of Edgar uh, per emergency management down in that area. Take a look at the high winds today, 93 degrees, in, or 93 degrees, 93 mile per hour in Lincoln, 92 in Bennett, 90 miles per hour in Eagle. Beatrice had an 86 mile per hour wind gust, Grand Island 85, and Fairbury had an 80 mile per hour wind gust. Right now, no gust being reported out at the airport, but notice Grand Island's got a 59 mile per hour gust, 52 mile per hour gust in Hastings, and still 61 miles per hour in Hebron. It's going to stay windy as we go through the evening hours. You'll see that in Stormcast as we go through the evening and into the nighttime hours. By 9 o'clock, we're still talking winds gusting 40 
to 50 miles per hour. Now, as we go through the overnight, the winds will start to back down. Once we get to about 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, I think we're talking winds gusting less than 30 miles per hour, but that's also going to set us up for a chilly morning from a wind chill standpoint tomorrow. Now, a high wind warning does continue through 9 o'clock this evening for all of southeast Nebraska. Now, tonight our temperatures will drop down in the middle to upper 20s. Factor in the wind and wind chill values tonight quickly dropping into the teens by 11 o'clock. By early tomorrow morning, if you're heading off to school or heading off to work, wind chill values may be into the upper teens to low 20s. A chilly feeling start to the day tomorrow. Now, as we go through the day tomorrow, we'll see mostly sunny skies, but it's going to be a much cooler day. Today we hit 74 degrees in Lincoln. We best, bested today's record high by 10 degrees set back in 2002. Tomorrow afternoon, highs will be in the middle to upper 40s. 47 degrees to be exact in Lincoln. And as I mentioned, uh, temperatures right now is much cooler than what we were this afternoon. It's 58 degrees in Lincoln, 61 degrees in Beatrice. The records that we had, we broke them and blew them out of the water in Lincoln and Grand Island. Hastings today tied the record high set back in 2002. Seven day forecast, cooler temperatures on Friday, 46. Saturday and Sunday morning will be chilly down in the teens. Saturday afternoon will be chilly with highs in the low to mid 30s. Beyond that, we see our temperatures rebounding back into the middle to upper 40s, maybe even near 50 degrees by Tuesday and Wednesday next week. And right now for Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, we're looking for temperatures to be in the lower to mid 40s, but it also looks to be dry at this time. All right, thank you very much, Sean. I know it's been a very long day for you, so appreciate your coverage. And here's a look at Wall Street. A great day. The Dow jumping 383 points. NASDAQ is up 328. Here are your numbers. We'll be right back. Tonight, after the powerful testimonies, get to the bottom of...
a spacecraft touched the sun. And a fish so freaky it sees through its own forehead. Here's tonight's Take a Look at This. For the first time in history, a man-made spacecraft has touched the sun. That's according to NASA, which says its Parker Solar Probe recently flew through the sun's corona, feeding back crucial data about our closest star. The probe launched in 2018 and has been hurtling toward the sun on a mission to explore its mysteries. The probe didn't actually touch the sun's surface because technically the sun doesn't have a solid surface. It reached the sun's corona, or in simpler terms, its upper atmosphere, or in even simpler terms, the wispy yellow thingy seen here. As it entered the corona, the probe fed back images of streams of plasma that surrounded the spacecraft, as well as collecting samples of particles and magnetic fields there. This is a huge milestone. It took us over six decades to come to this point. NASA researchers say this is just the first of many planned Parker flybys. The probe will continue orbiting over the next several years, bringing it millions of miles even closer to the sun. You gotta love science, am I right? Just look at this amazing video captured by researchers aboard a deep sea vessel off the coast of California of a freaky fish that can see through its own forehead. The six inch barrel eye fish, or Macropenna microstoma, lives at a depth of roughly 2,000 feet and can rotate its eyes upward to see through transparent tissue on its head and track its prey stealthily from below. See what I mean? Science! For Take a Look at This, I'm Jeremy Roth. Oh boy, let's get a recap of the weather. John, let's get this straight. In one day here, temperatures in the 70s, winds up to 93, tornado warning, severe mm -hmm. thunderstorm and warnings. Parts getting snow now. What else is there to do, John? Go home. <laughs> um, <laughs> that you're ready. <laughs> yeah. Have a drink uh, of your choice. <laughs> no, no, I will tell you, the severe threat is done for tonight. Mm -hmm. However, we've got some limited visibility. We've got a lot of blowing uh, s dust around the area, so that's going to drop. That's the view right now from Allo where you can see it. Uh, and then also there is the potential for a little snow, mainly north of I-80 and out towards Grand Island and Kearney. All right. Thank you, John. See you at 6. With the Channel 8 Eyewitness News mobile app, you'll be the first to know. Get alerts about breaking news and weather, all in the palm of your hand. Satisfy a huge hunger with Amigos Build It Burrito. We'll build it fresh, just the way you want it. As a burrito or a bowl, build it big at Amigos. Closed captioning on Channel 8 Eyewitness